vitamins and supplements really work. In our book together, Ray Kurzweil and I discuss how longevity can be achieved by passing over three bridges. A key component of bridge one is taking nutritional supplements. Yet many critics in the scientific community argue that number one, if you eat a balanced diet, supplements are not necessary. The so-called expensive urine argument. And number two, that supplements do not work anyway. Yet, when we look at the peer-reviewed medical literature, we find an entirely different story. Let's look first at the argument that supplements are not necessary if one eats a balanced diet. The Food and Nutrition Board established the RDA as a recommended dietary allowances in the 1940s, and in 2006, they published a 500-page book providing even more detailed recommendations for vitamins and minerals. Yet national surveys show that micronutrient inadequacies are widespread in the U.S. and that dietary supplements, of which multivitamin mineral formulations are the most common type, help fulfill micronutrient requirements in adults and children. Let's just look at three antioxidant vitamins and see how many Americans do not get even the minimal RD amounts. First of all, vitamin E. Studies show that 93% of Americans do not get even the minimal amount of vitamin E required for good health through their diets. Nutritional supplements can correct this. Vitamin C. One out of three Americans does not consume enough vitamin C in their diet to meet the RDA requirements. Furthermore, studies performed by Dr. Mark Levine at the National Institute of Health suggest that even these minimal recommendations are too low. Vitamin D. The majority of U.S. physicians now check vitamin D levels on their patients and they found that 42% of Americans are low on vitamin D, along with African Americans being 82% with low levels and 69% of Hispanics. Vitamin D is not readily available from the diet or from food and requires direct sunlight exposure to the skin. Yet most people use sunscreen or avoid direct sunlight to prevent skin aging or skin cancer. Therefore, supplementation is necessary. As far as minerals go, a significant portion of the population also does not consume the minimal required amount of minerals, such as iron, calcium, and zinc. This has led to the epidemic of fatigue, osteoporosis, and immune disorders that we're seeing today. As regards the second argument that supplements do not work anyway, the largest and longest randomized controlled trial of multivitamin and mineral supplementation conducted to date, the Physician's Health Study, found a significant reduction in cancer incidence in male physicians. In men with a history of cancer, the cancer incidence was 27% lower with multivitamin mineral supplementation versus placebo. These results could translate to the prevention of about 68,000 cancers per year if all men were to use similar supplements. This is hardly support for the arguments that supplements do not work. In women, an association was seen between multivitamin mineral use and reduced coronary vascular disease mortality risk. Long-term use of calcium and vitamin D supplementation appears to confer a reduction in risk that may be substantial regarding hip fracture among the postmenopausal women. Risks such as elevation in urinary tract stone formation appear to be modest. The published benefits of supplements include increased energy and stress tolerance, decreased infection rates, slowing of bone loss, reduction in migraines, improvement in congestive heart failure, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, and depression. In addition, beyond taking supplements during the period when they're taken, a Swedish study of 443 healthily elderly patients who took CoQ10 along with selenium experienced mortality rates they were 40% lower than placebo 12 years after they discontinued taking the supplements. So the takeaway messages are simple. Rather than creating expensive urine, vitamin and mineral supplementation is number one, effective, number two, safe, and number three, very much needed.